Yo, 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 what's going on, y'all? We are finally here. I am Billboard Hip Hop Editor Carl Lamar. And today is a big day. Today's a big moment. Today's the perfect day to boss up. Perfect day to boss up, baby. Perfect. Today, today is the perfect day to boss up. If you guys do not know, I'm sure you guys do. This is why you're here. We got Mr. Ricky Rose. I'm talking about five number one albums on the Billboard 200. Serial entrepreneur, you know the names. Wink Stop, Cookies, Checkers, Jack Dot. I could keep going, but he's also a New York Times bestseller with book number two. Ricky Rose, my guy. Let's get it, man. Man, it feel good. Thank you for having me. It's a huge celebration, my brother. Every time we sit down, we make history and we have powerful conversation. So once again, I look forward to it, man. And like you say, book number two, man, who would imagine this? But we here, so we gonna keep going, why not? There we go, we here. Before we get the conversation started, everybody, I know y'all hungry, waiting for that book. Signed copies of The Perfect Day to Boss Up coming in eight to 10 days. They'll be at your doorstep, so be prepared and ready for that. Ricky. What's up, baby, what's up? I love the timing of this book because listen, there's a thing called perfect timing and a lot of people have been hurting, you know, due to this pandemic, trying to find a way to figure things out, trying to find the right hustle, how to capitalize on the hustle. And you came out with the blueprint, which is a perfect day to boss up. Talk about the reason why you decided to come out with book number two at this juncture. Man, we have no time to waste, none. It's a perfect day to boss up, meaning every day is a perfect day to, to boss up, you know? And so during the pandemic, me and Neil got together and you know we may have spent 90 days putting this book together and he just followed me from when I would wake up 6 a.m. to when I would lay down. Wow. And basically what we did was we took notes and he, you know, he would watch me take notes of what I would do during the day. I would wake up and take notes of what I did during the day. At the end of the day, I would ask myself, what was what did I waste time on and mm. what could I spend more time on? Wow. Shout out to Brother Neil, um, co-author, wrote Hurricanes with Rick Ross. Better believe it. Better believe it. And R Ricky, man, reading this book, I think a lot of people, you know, they're going to learn shit. Right when, you know, the pandemic happened, you ended up getting the bug, getting getting coronavirus. And, and you were trying to f fight your way through. Thankfully, you did. Man, talk about that experience sitting at the crib and game plan and what your next move going to be from here. Well, you got to remember that's, you know, when I got the fungus, because the fungus is still among us. The fungus, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but when I got the fungus, that was before anybody knew what it was. Mm -hmm. I had already, you know, previously been in the hospital before with conditions with my lungs, so this and that. So when I came across this, this version of the fungus, man, I went home and shut down. Mm. You know, it was extreme for Rose, you feel me? Mm -hmm. You know, I had everybody boiling me ginger, lemon, this, this, <laughs> this, 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 this. None of that ain't work, you know what I'm saying? None of that yeah. ain't work. That was, you know, so it was a rough situation, but um, once I found out exactly what it was, hey man, I spread the word, the fungus is among us, you gotta do what you gotta do, but it was what it was. Blessed man, we, we were blessed to have you still intact, still out here rocking, still out here moving. I mean, listen, a lot of people, like I said, were affected, especially in the music industry. You had a tour coming up that summer. I'm talking about with Jeezy. I'm talking about with Tip. You also right. had the Vegas residency. Everything was getting canceled left and right. What was your next move when you saw that happening? Well, basically, you know, it was just about spending time with myself. And that's what I did. I spent more time with myself. I spent more time with social media, just staying in touch with the fans. But other than that, as far as the position I was in as a boss, financially, everything remained the same. You mm. dig? I still was playing how I wanted to play, you know, buying the old schools, doing what I wanted to do, the woo -woo 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 -woo. but I just had to remain a hustler. I had to remain a boss. It's a numbers game. It's a numbers game, and by being a boss, listen, y'all, I ran through the names. I'm talking about wing stop checkers. I'm going to manifest this one for Ricky right here. I see a John Deere and Rose Tractor on the way. I can see it, brother. 
I can see it. And I say that because one of the biggest purchases you made during the pandemic, according to the book, was the tractor. Why did Rose decide to get himself a tractor? Well, for the first time in 15 years, I wasn't touring during the summer. Like I said, I had more time to spend with myself, more time to spend with the family, more time to spend on the property. And so that's what I did. I said, you know what? I'm gonna cut my own grass. I went and bought my own big boy tractor, had it tinted, the sound system, when I'm sitting up in that thing. <laughs> you feel me? So, and I think that's something that once again, I speak of in the book is, as a boss, you gotta always remain hands on. Mm -hmm. I'm always hands on, you know what I'm saying? So I began cutting my own grass. When I bought the estate, it was 280 properties. I bought another 89 to add to it. And me and a couple of my homies, we still get out there every other week, handle our business. And you cut costs doing that with the landscaping, which is extremely smart, by the way. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. From my understanding, the previous owner, he has up to 17 people in the, on, you know, handling, maintaining the, the property every day. Wow. My... That's, that's ridiculous. You know, I, I want to take it because you mentioned it in the book, and I remember seeing this in an interview, I believe it was uh, with Complex. I remember young Ricky Rose was working at the car wash, making $30 a day. Better believe it. But there was something about Ricky Rose that was different from your typical worker. I'm talking about Ricky Rose would go in the, in the car and he would organize the tape cassettes, put them in ABC order. That's a different kind of work ethic to have as, as a young kid. What made you decide to go beyond and, and, and take it to a next level while you were working at the car wash? Because not a lot of people do that. Yeah, one, I think it was just, you know, recognizing, looking at it now, of course, it was me going above and beyond. Mm -hmm. Other than the fact that I love those old school cars when the dope boys pulled up behind the, the gas station to get a car wash, not only did I love them, not only did I want the hustlers to get to know me, but, mm -hmm. but uh, I understood what it took to get recognized for that extra tip. Ain't mm -hmm. nobody gonna give you no tip for free. You could be the youngest out there washing cars and because you was the youngest, ain't nobody just hand you $5. So I understood and I accepted that. So I went above and beyond. And, you know, after so long, everybody knew you want to get the little fat kid right there. And he'll put gas in your car too while you're gone. That's that, that's that ridiculous work ethic right there. Rose, I, there was a part in the book which like took me by surprise. Brother, when you signed a Def Jam, you did not touch your advance. Not a lot of rappers would do that because it's like, oh, you're giving me X amount of money. I'm about to go ball out. You decided, hey, I'm going to put this to the side and I'm going to keep on working. Talk you know, about. Yeah, yeah. Matt Mike is not there. <laughs> That's what I did. Yeah. Talk about that money management and that savvy you had, especially knowing your, your grind coming up as a ghost rider and trying to perfect that sound that you were able to while hustling. Well, you know, me being a ghost writer, I was, you know, writing music which was, you know, not really getting me no kind, no kind of money, you understand? And I, I, I accept that. I was writing music for other artists that was trying to get on. We all was just chasing our dreams. And it took a lot, a lot of work in a, in a long time, hella effort. But the things I did make happen for me, you know, I had a crib whip or whatever. So when I finally got a record deal, I got a seven figure advance. I spent none of that for the first year, nothing. Mm. Nothing. I went and did damn near every show I was performing five times a week. And I wasn't spending nothing. I wanted to stack that because I knew what it was like to have nothing. And I knew what it was like to, you know, uh, imagine myself getting a big record in the, the following year. What you going to do, big homie? Mm. So I said, okay, I'm going to strategize. I'm going to make sure I put myself in the position where I will never be back in this position, regardless mm. of what it is. I won't be back here. You dig? And man, here we are. Brother Rose, that's discipline right there. Coming from somebody that was getting at first $250 a show, and now you damn near touching nine figures. And I say that because you talk in the book about having tunnel vision. No, 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 we ain't damn near. We oh, oh we, we hitting nine figures. There we yeah, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. We ain't playing no games. There yeah. we go. Let them know, $100 million man. Talk about no no no, uh, no 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 we 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 plus that I, 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 you know what we got we got to Google the numbers to make sure I'm doing it right you know what I'm saying there we go toast up to that Rose over hundred million 
you know, coming from where you came from, you had to make a lot of sacrifices. I'm talking about you may have not been able to chill with the fam like you wanted to. You may have not been able to take a seat the way you wanted to. Talk about the gift and the curse of having well, that tunnel vision. Well, when you talk about the sacrifices that you got to make to make it, you know, to this level, um, it's going to be big ones. But mm -hmm. I, I understood that and I accepted those, you understand? And I had a be I was blessed to have a beautiful team, my sister, my mother, and everybody that could just, because when you talk about your kids, you most definitely have a sacrifice that you got to make getting on the road, you know, to build an empire. Mm. Like I said, I accepted that. Because I said, I'd rather sacrifice the time myself and have my kids in a position where they could live the life they would want to live without having to make huge sacrifices. I do it all myself. And that's what I'm with. And, um, you know, my daughter, my son, you know, just my little one's period. They understand what's going on. And this is, this is for the, this for the long road. Rose, what I, what I appreciate, man, cause I know what, there's a lot of kids aspiring to make it in the music industry. And these are cats, Hey, I want to be a rapper, but I also have a clothing line and I'm also trying to be a, 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 a an influencer. They're trying to be a jack of all trades. And you talk about in the book, the importance of mastering your craft before jumping into different avenues. Why is it so important to master your craft first before diving into different areas? I'm a firm believer you gotta be a great, you, you should be great at something versus good at everything. Mm. Great at something. You gotta make history at something versus just being good at everything, you dig? And, and that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a great writer, a great artist, a great executive, you know what I mean? And everything else just rolled downhill for me. But, but I had to establish myself and for everybody that was sitting at the table with me to know what Big Boy gonna bring to the table. Big Boy gonna go above and beyond, believe that. Believe and, uh, and the thing with Big Boy, he also knows how to manage his emotions, which is another thing you talk about in the book. A right. lot of people, they, they struggle and they end up being reactive. You know, obviously you had your fair share of media complex, uh, 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 conflicts or whatever, but you ended up learning the art of just mastering your emotions. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to tuck in all that bullshit and you be know, able to deliver the way you have? Man, just being a big boy, you gotta understand um, when, when the city on your back, when everything's on your back, you have to be a leader and you gotta lead by example. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. I understand that, you know, of course, Rose, you, when you when you a winner and you want to win every day, you're going to have your emotions involved, but you got to do what's best for business. Mm. Let's do what's best for business, because two years from now, we won't remember that small talk y'all was talking about. Mm. Whatever that little person name was that draw, we won't remember that. All we'll remember is, you know, that big L you took. So, yo, let's focus on, let's focus on the, um, once again, it's a numbers game. Let's focus on the numbers. Let's make sure we win it. So two years from now, it's only one thing we should be speaking of. And that's the fact that we won and won big. You know, when you win big, and you and I spoke about this earlier, you know when you win big, when you can buy back the block. I'm talking about going back to the hometown of Clarksdale, Mississippi. I'm talking about opening your 25th, 25, y'all, 25th wing stop back home. What was oh, that man. feeling like buying back the block? Man, it felt good just going back to Mississippi period because I understood what me watching those Miami Dolphin players when they would ride down the street leaving practice, you know, me seeing those white Mercedes Benz and this and that. And I know what it did for my inspiration and my imagination. So me coming back to Clarksdale, Mississippi, you know, this Rose, you know, my mom, my sister, my little ones, we all standing mm -hmm. out there. Yo, this is most definitely inspiration. This is something for everybody to go back home and tell the little ones, yo, Ricky, yo, Rose did this, did that, did this, did that. So they could know that this is a reality. You understand? Mm -hmm. This is a reality. This is a reality for you, for everybody that's watching this, being the owner of whatever it is you're trying to do. Because you only one partnership and one play away from bam, being on top of the game, and then they bow down. Mm. I think what people undermine and undervalue about you, Rose, is the fact that you're still a student when it comes to being a boss. Right. And it takes a lot of humility 
to do that. For example, you know, Boss's turns of uh, remain students is like a chapter you have in the book. You talk about teaming up with uh, Berna for, for, for the cookies collab. You could have went anyway. You could have took a check, but you decided to take the back seat and learn from him. Why did you decide to take the back seat in this scenario? Because, you know, us being bosses, we, we got to be visionaries. You got to understand the value of a great partnership. I understand what I bring to the game music-wise, writing records, choosing beats and production. This my homie Burner. This the man, he got the number one smoke, not, not just in the US, but in the world. He number one at getting breeders together and cross-stranded strands that may have took three years to take for him just to bring the meat of smoke. Mm -hmm. So why not partner up with him? He's he cookies a billion dollar independent company that he built and still owns himself. And guess what? We've become partners, Collins Ave, man. And I look forward to us opening a dispensary on Collins Ave and I'm confident it'll make seven figures a day. So why mm -hmm. not have a partner that could see my vision as well? Let's create valuable partnerships. And yeah. shout out to Berna, 20 years, y'all. 20 years and he just kept on moving and he has an empire on his hand. Shout out to Brett as well, man, because I, I, as the big homie said, being self-made tastes better. Oh, man. And it feels better. You sleep better at night, man. <laughs> you sleep better at night being self-made. I love it. It feels so great when you achieve what you achieve without all the fake love. Mm. And, 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 and I bring up the brother, you know, Brett, and, and, and I'm thinking about also your Bel Air um, collaboration. When you first came in, you were voted, shout out to MTV, hottest rapper, hottest MC in the game back in the day. And you were in a situation where like, they wanted to bring you in, but they're like, yo, Russ, we're gonna, we're gonna give it a year, let everything grow. And you started doing shit for free. You marketing it for free. You, you pushing the cases out for free. Yeah. Not a lot of cats would have done anything for free. It's a lot of cats that that lack the vision that I have. And I understand that. But I knew what I wanted to be a part of. I knew I wanted to be a student. Mm -hmm. I saw what Brett Barish did with Ace of Spades, with Duce, he created those brands. I saw what he did. So I knew, oh man, he sees the vision. He understands mm -hmm. the culture. When I met him, he was a cool dude. And I just wanted to make sure they understood what I brought to the table. And for anybody that don't, I will initiate this myself to show you this. And I get up on my story every morning and I speak to, you know, just individuals around the world and ask them about being brand ambassadors, making yourself visible. Because mm. the more visible you are, the more valuable you are, the bigger your platform is, the more people want to, you know, be a part of it. Mm. And you becoming a brand ambassador the same way I did with Brett, with Luke Belair, so on and so forth. I just began with showing love. I was already going to the clubs five nights a week. Why not rep a brand? Yo, I just held a pitch up. Till it became a point where, you know what? You know, they 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 understand your vision. For a year straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and to me, that's what's key to success. Cause everybody not gonna see your vision right off the jump and they not supposed to. And I get it, but you will. It's my job to make sure you do. Mm. Rose, but there's cats out there in the streets, right? They're like, yo, Rose, I can't work for free. I'm busy out here getting this blood money, which is something that you speak about in the book. Talk about the importance of going legit and not going the route of that blood money. And y'all, the blood money is inflicting pain, you know, gaining success, uh, mon monetary value and success of somebody else's pain. Talk about that. Man, at the end of the day, what you got to do is find a way to make yourself happy. Mm. How do you do that? How do you do that? I don't judge happiness by the way the goal or how much paper you got, but it's judged on how happy you are on your inner, with your inner self, your inner being. How do I judge my happiness? I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know. Did I, did I achieve my my goals, did I accomplish everything that I set out to do? It's not a dollar figure, it's not a dollar amount, but am I happy with you know what I've accomplished? And brothers, we gotta find a way to, to be happy. We gotta yeah. find a way to be happy. It, it, and it's not a dollar figure, you dig? And there's no dollar figure and also learning 
to take a loss gracefully. You know, they're, they're, they're the chapter in the book about manifest, not, not manifesting, about, about mastering, yeah. mastering, you know, taking that L. Rose, how, 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 I don't know how to take an L, Rose. I was born a winner. I can't take an L, man. We not losers out here. I'm going to be honest. And to me, mastering the art of taking the L is what makes you a winner because life, life is such a beautiful struggle. And we will take loss. But to me, it's how you get up from the loss, how you walk away from the loss, where it actually makes you question, was that really a loss? Mm. Was that really a loss? Because when I think back to the times I was driving out of town to go perform places when I didn't have the gas money, man, when those crowds were only 30 and 40 people, but when I came out for the first time and they got to saw Rose for the first time, their eyes were that big and they wouldn't blink for, for three minutes. Mm. So now when I'm in a position I'm in now, when I think back to that crowd, those fans, that look on those faces, me doing that for two hundred and fifty dollars was that a loss? That wasn't a loss. You got to have hella vision to be able to walk past that and maintain that kind of strength. I mean, shit, <laughs> Rose. I also gotta gotta mention, man. Um, there's a part in the book, and we spoke about this earlier too, um, where you mentioned having your own hustle. And, and, and not being swayed by anybody else's hustle. During the pandemic, you, you kicked it with Kanye over at Pinewood Studios. Shout out to Kanye, got the Billy. We all aspiring for the Billy. But you also spoke about as much as you loved how he was able to get that success, you wouldn't follow the same blueprint. Why not follow that same blueprint if he was able to get that Billy that we all want? And ain't nothing wrong with that. And I'm, I'm happy for that brother. That brother is amazing. And he, and he got his money, he got his paper right. Mm -hmm. but, but like I said, I wouldn't go that route. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I got my own, my own destiny, you know what I'm saying? And I know what it'd be best for, for Rose. And I feel mm -hmm. we all get to that fork in the road where we gotta make those decisions and you gonna do what's best for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it feel good. And I love watching others shine. I'm inspired by other success. I have no problem with that. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is, straight and up. You, and you might just take a little bit. You might not follow that blueprint, but you might take a little bit of sauce and sprinkle it, but still it, it's yours at the end of the day. It's your secret sauce. Yeah, without a doubt. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm always mm -hmm. studying, I'm always watching. That comes with being a student. You understand? But but you gotta you gotta you gotta make your own, you gotta make your own history. What I, what I thought was interesting, man, there was a point you were thinking about changing the album name, Richer Than I Ever Been. You thought about it because you were like, you know what? I don't know if this is the ideal title to run with, but what does that title mean to you now with this book being out? Oh man, it, it's, you know, it still mean so many different things because rich is so many different things to me. You understand? You go back to once again, that happiness, mm -hmm. you know? Like I speak on in the book, controlling time. Time is the most valuable asset you will ever have control of because mm -hmm. believe it or not, there will come a point where we all would like to have more time. Mm -hmm. When I look at my kids' faces, when I see my mama smile, oh man, yeah. Time is valuable, mm -hmm. believe that. There, there, there was a line in the book that really, it hit me right here, hit me in the chest. Why is it dangerous to put a, a deadline on your dreams? Don't do it. Don't do it. You know how many people when the music I was making, I was, you know, making slow music, talking about getting in the streets, talking about making a million. When all the successful music where I was from was, you know, the, the chicks in the bikinis at the swimming pool parties. Go, 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 go. And I love it, but damn, you know how many people said, that shit ain't gonna work. Mm. I wonder what they sleep like now. Mm. <laughs> I wonder what you sleep like now. And mm. I ain't saying that in a disrespectful way, but I won't talk down on nobody's dreams, homie. Mm -hmm. If you got that vision and if that's what's burning in your heart, I can't be the one to tell you not to do it. I mm. want to see you win. 
You understand? But for the ones that ain't see my vision and can't sleep now, man, if they think they can't sleep, man, imagine what it's like trying to sleep next to 20 mil cash. They can't. They can't. And, you know, what comes with being a boss, a lot of people, then they could just wake up, Ricky, and be like, yo, I want to be like Rose today. But they don't think about the 10,000 hour rule. And I want you to talk about how the 10,000 hour rule was so vital to your early days in your career as a songwriter and as a rapper. It's just, once you commit, once you commit yourself, you commit your heart, your life, your passion to what your goals are. Mm -hmm. You really got to turn the, you, 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 turn your clock off and just follow your dreams. You can only imagine how much time you have been uninvested um, into what it is you love, into what it is you're trying to become. And when you mean that and you stand beside that, man, welcome to the club. It's the three comma club, baby. Mm, the I like that, a three comma club. Yeah, the three, the three comma club, you know what I'm saying? And you gotta be willing to invest over 10,000 hours into that, baby. Mm. Ricky. I got to ask, before we jump into the fan question, we're still work in progress. We all are. You we know, whether you, yeah, whether you got a mill, whether you got a dollar, we're all still a work in progress. How are you perfecting your lifestyle as a boss? What are you continuously learning and, and, and trying to get better at to make sure you're the ultimate boss that you can be? Oh, man, I, 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 tr I make sure I'm not the same person I was a week ago whether if I'm an employee, whether I'm a boss, whether I'm the Don, whatever it is, whatever role it is I play. I have my little homie here print out my partnerships mm. and it's plus one jet dot. So I, I currently have 20 partnerships currently. Wow. And what it's about with me is finding a way to never be burnt out. I never wake up. Oh, ah. I, we not with that complaining shit. That shit don't fly over here. So we got to wake up and be ahead of the curve. I want to be the one to call my partners. Hey, man, send me those pictures over that I was asking about. Hey, man, when we going to do this and do that? I'm not really the one getting called. I want to be ahead of the curve. And that's with 20 partnerships. And I feel in the next year, it'll be 50. Oof. It'll be 50 with no stress. How we do that? We got to do what we love and we got to make sure everything we do, man, is we capitalizing on it. When you look up, you look up and you look around, damn. Oh, that just so happened to be the number one V on that's Rose been sitting there the whole time. Oh yeah, big time. We ain't playing no games. And it's all intentional. You got to go out your way to be successful. And the things I do for my teammates and my homies and they just say, damn, man, we, we, we ain't even know you was going to do that. You ain't got to know. Y'all, we ain't asked you to do that. You ain't got to ask. It's a difference over here, homie. We're going to go out our way to make sure we win. And that's just not for me, but that's for everybody else that's sitting at the table with me. Mm. 20 partnerships and the brother still be up 5, 6 in the morning like it's nothing. Still having a rap career. Still being one of the best out right now in the game. That's a lot to balance, Ricky. So shout out to you. Much love, man, much love. And I feel it's a lot more we could do and we should do. Let's push ourselves. Let's be great. Let's be great and we not just talking that shit. We not just saying it because it's cool. We not just posting it on Instagram because it's cool. No, nah, we gotta show you what it's really like. Now mm -hmm. let's go and get it. I told you at the start of this, we gonna manifest that John Deere, Ricky Rose tractor. I know it's coming. I can feel it coming, Ricky. Oh uh, man, you smart. You've been a smart brother. I actually had a conversation with John Deere last week. <laughs> wow. Real talk. Facts. Y'all wow. can add John Deere. Add him. Woo! Ricky Rose tractors. That's a game changer right there. I mean, just let's just network. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we inspiring the youngsters to, to lean in towards land, real estate. You know, and I understand coming from where we come from, what good is attractive? You don't have nothing to cut, but we will, and we are, and we're going to make that more part of the conversation. I love it. I love it. Shout out to my brother, Ricky Rose. Let's get to some of these fan questions here on in the Q&A. 
Shout out to, to, to Brittany Jones. She wants to know, what advice do you have for a woman walking in a man's world? How does she stay encouraged to keep going? Well, remain strong. Um, remain a queen, hold your head high, because to me, nothing translates that message stronger and better than a strong, confident woman. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at my empire, the ones who run it, I may be the face of my empire, but the ones who run my empire begins with my mother, my sister, and my general manager, which is Yvette, Yvette Yavilla, you dig? She's a, a, a real, you know, she's a real boss. So um, it's nothing like a strong, intelligent, confident woman. And I feel like a real boss as a man understands that role that strong women play and accept, you know, taking that back seat sometimes. I have no problem with that. So you keep shining and keep doing what you're doing, Queen. Shout out to Brittany. We, we got also got a question here from Marlon Francis. He said, shout out to the biggest boss in the game with the strongest work ethic. Better believe it. We ain't gonna stop neither. We ain't stopping. We ain't there stopping. we go. You know the vibes. His question is, what do you feel is the best avenue that a young entrepreneur should take into marketing their brand product and services? And out of their budget, how much should they invest in marketing and promotion? Mm. That's a great question. And you know, that second half of the question really comes down to a personal situation. Mm -hmm. But I feel like right now, the way the platforms are, the way social media are, it's all about you remaining visible. How can you make yourself that much more visible? How many other people can you bring to your network to bring that visibility to that much? You know, and so that's what I do with my Instagram a lot of times. People that's posting our brands, official Bel Avion, this or that, this or that. They post it in the picture. I run it back through our entire system. So that's what we get out of you taking the picture and posting it. Then I run it back through myself and all of the homies that's on our team. You understand? And so a lot of times they hit back, yo, Rose, we got thousands of followers, this or that, whatever it is, but it's just about you remaining visible. I do it every day. And Rose, what I, I got to also make this comment. What I love and appreciate, you always shout out the young entrepreneurs. It's not about the, the, you know, whether you got the biggest followers or not, it's if you're willing to grind, willing to push and willing to excel. Oh, that's what I most definitely do. I actually, at least once or twice a week, take my time out. Young stylists, young designers, young entrepreneurs. And I, I can't front a lot of times they clothes look horrendous, but <laughs> there is a lot of flash shit that come through. And I make sure I show love to them all. Because so, like mm -hmm. I say, you always one design away from being on top of the game. Mm -hmm. You one photo, you one celeb away from wearing your shit and it bam, you, you, you take off. You be in Neiman Marcus, you feel me? Wherever is that. So, you know, and I, like I said, I'm not the one to tell you it ain't dope, but um, it's just for my vision. And I make sure I share my platforms, put them on my IGs, Facebook, so on and so forth. And it's just out of love. 100%. Shout out to Jalen for this next question. What helps you stay motivated during your toughest times? Well, you know, like I said, I feel like if it was about a dollar, I would have been just winning, got, a, got on a big boat in Nice, France, and just been blowing big smoke. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. some shit like that. But I feel like we got to make history here. We got a lot of potential. You know what I'm saying? We done took off, you know, the pace we on now and what we doing now is really incredible. You know, we created Thigh Stop during the pandemic and, it's look, and, and that's doing such an amazing thing that it's looking like we finna continue doing that. So shout out to Charlie Morrison, the whole team at Wingstop. Wingstop still number one. And it's just everything else we got going on. So let's make history, but this only the beginning. I wanna bring more partners to the table. You know, we having a boss up conference. I wanna sit down with with more visionaries, you know what I mean? I want to become a part of whatever it is they got going on as well. It's not just about Rosé, it's about what you got going on. You bring something to the table and let's take it to the next level. And I'm speaking to everybody that's watching this. Mm. It's gonna be, that Boss Up Conference is gonna be something serious. It's gonna be some Shark Tank kind of vibe with Ricky Rosé as your host and, and, and prime investor. <laughs> Better believe it. Better believe it. I may buy some of them ideas cash right on the spot. There you go, there you go. I believe we got, we got, we got some more questions coming in. Um, we got one from Nora Bonds 
And Nora's question is, where is she at? She said, what advice can you provide for a startup black owned publication? Well, um, you know, publications, maybe you will have a better answer, you know, yeah. uh, you know, for, for that, you know, I'm not sure how the publication game moving with the social media platform now, you understand? Mm-hmm. But I know, I know it's still there. I know it's still there because there's so much content being created and that's what's, what people and brands and companies are paying for, content. So if you create content and doing it in a dope way, a cool way, it's most definitely money to get because I'm, I'm always willing to be in, being down with some dope content. So holler at Carl, get at me, let's make history. Rose, I got to ask you this question. I've always been so intrigued by your social media savvy, you know, especially, you know, at this point in your career, because a lot of guys, they don't understand social media. They don't understand the importance of remaining consistent. At what point in your career did you, you were you like, you know what? I got to learn this social media thing and I got to get hip to it and hip to it fast and be a beast at it. You know, I was always cool. I always wanted to make sure, you know, I did what I can to, ex, you know, expand the brand, expand the empire. Mm-hmm. But once the pandemic hit is when I began getting on my story. I had Sam Sneak, my DJ, man. You know, they saying get on your story and doing all this because I was scared to go live. I went live today for maybe my third time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, so I got on my story and, um, and just really began talking to people that was in my DMs and I would get so many questions a day. But the main question is, Rose, how'd you do it? How can mm. I boss up? How'd you do it? How can I do this? How can I do that? I just want to know how you did it, homie. And then I got these questions from, you know, NFL players that was in the league for over a dozen years, this and that. And I'm like, damn, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of uh, wisdom that we got to share. And that's what really inspired all this. We got, I'm going to go with two more questions. And we're going to go with right here. Joel Garcia. Hey, Rose, big fan since I was young. My one question is, what is your advice to a 21-year-old man growing up in Miami in times like this? Mm. You got to have a vision. You got to have a vision and you got to stick to it. Don't stop, regardless of what, what position you in. If you in school, if you're not in school, if you are uh, employed, self-employed, if you working at a barber shop, if you cutting grass, whatever it is, believe it or not, you still on pace. You're not behind nothing. Mm-hmm. Cause at that age, homie, I wasn't on, you know, I wasn't on track yet. So long as you got a vision and you stay on pace, oh man, you're going to get to the money. There's no age to this, Rose. I, I've always ain't been trying no to tell to people, yeah. No, 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 ain't no age to this. All you got to do is live by what you say and you got to really mean it. Mm-hmm. When, when it come down to our visions and our dreams, you know, I consider this the table and anybody that's coming acting goofy at the table, <laughs> you gotta get the fuck from over here, homie. <laughs> we don't do that over here. Oh, this life, this our yeah. life. And this how serious we are about this shit. Mm-hmm. We going above and beyond and you can't be predictable. Every time we talk, you should be bringing something to the table. Don't just call me and tell me about what you've seen on the shade room, you understand? Mm. You gotta call me and tell me about some big plays. If not, you're gonna be one of the people that, that I don't answer. There you go. There you go. Let's let's close this thing out with a bang. Uh, we're gonna close it out with Kaylin New. Just like to thank Ross for allowing us to get these jewels. Question I had was when you first started out, what was your short-term goals? And what were your long-term goals? Well, me starting out, once I got every damn, I release every damn hustle in my, my first hit record. My short-term goal was really making it through the first year. Mm. making it through the first year and that go back to me stacking all my paper like it wasn't nothing there. So however I had to go to war that following year, you know, I had my artillery, you feel me? And so that's what it was. The short-term goal was just making it through. Long-term goal-wise, it was uh, completing another classic album. Mm. You know what I mean? I didn't want to get too ahead of myself. I just wanted to make some dope shit. The streets appreciated. You know, if you rock with that Port of Miami album, that first album, because it meant so much to so many people. I wanted to make sure I could deliver something that second go round that said, damn, 
my dog really here to stay. So that was, you know, the, the, the short-term goal was just making it through 06. Long-term goal was making sure I deliver a big boy album before 08. Wow. And of course, once I did that, it was um, just about me remaining consistent, not, ne not letting nothing or nobody sidetrack me. And here we are, working on about to drop album 11. And album 11, shout out to album one, Port of Miami, 15. It's a whole teenager right there, 15 years old. Oh, that's longevity. That's consistency, my brother. Oh, man, and it mean a lot. And it mean a lot. And remaining consistent. That's just remaining hands-on. Let's remain hands-on. I ain't never too big for no position, no job. And, and, and you heard me say this before. If I walk in the wing stop, and if the floor needs to be swept, I grab the broom before I call somebody over from the register. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. I mean... Ross, uh, uh, before before we, we wrap up, is there anything you want to say to, to to your fans? Oh man, thank you all for checking in. Thank you, thank you all for making this happen. Book number two is out. You dig? It's a perfect day to boss up, and every day that you wake up, you know anybody that watched my story in the morning, I, I you know first thing I'm telling you is morning glory because you won. You already woke up. It's a lot of people ain't wake up and not gonna wake up. So you've already won. Morning glory. Now let's take it to the next level. Come on, let's do it, boss up. Boom, let's get it. Shout out to Barnes & Noble for tonight's event. Everybody, again, please be patient. Your book is coming real soon. Eight to 10 days signed. Ricky Rose, the perfect day to boss up. Yo, let's get it. Let's get it. Calm, number love, homie. Everybody tuned in. Man, I wish you nothing but success, but we got to bust our ass and go get it. You got to grind hard. No excuses are acceptable. I don't care about your ingrown toenail. I don't care about your great auntie that y'all buried. It's gonna be a lot of people that die, but let's mm. die at the top. Ooh. And album number 11 on the way, ladies and gentlemen, be ready. Let's get it, y'all. Call Lamar, Ricky Rose, perfect day to boss up. Let's get it. Oh. Peace, y'all. Love.